Before I get started defining these five terms, I want to describe the difference between an expression and an equation. Presently, this is an expression. If I put in an equal sign, I still don't have an equation because there's just air on the other side. But as soon as I have a number or a variable, let's say 2, now we have an equation. With an equation, you can try to solve for x or for y if you get one variable all by itself. But with an expression, there's no way to try to solve for x or y. You could combine like terms, and I'll be describing how to do that shortly. But again, there's no way to solve for x or y. And now this side, I'm going to turn this into an expression. Right now, it's just, you could call this a coefficient, but usually we would call it a constant, since there's no variable. But as soon as you have an operation, like 2 times x, you have an expression. Or 2x plus 7, this is an expression as well and this is an expression. So these two expressions taken together can form an equation and you can solve the equation or at least you can try to solve the equation. But if you have just an expression there's no way to solve it. You can simplify it by combining like terms. I'll put a red bracket over the entire expression I'll put a green bracket underneath each term. Now a term consists of the sign in front of the number, the number, the variable, and the exponent. So this is a positive 7x squared, negative 4y, positive 3x squared, positive 3x, negative 5y, and positive 8. So the entire expression consists of six terms. Each term has a coefficient. The coefficient is the number in front of the variable and this includes the sign in front of the number. So the coefficient of 7x squared is a positive 7. The coefficient of negative 4y is negative 4. This coefficient is positive 3. Even positive 8 can be considered a coefficient. I know there's not a variable visible, but we can call it a coefficient. But usually when we have a number without a variable, we simply call it a constant. But if I was asked to list all the coefficients of this expression, everything that's written in orange would be on my list except perhaps I wouldn't bother to put a positive in front of a 3 or the 8, but you certainly have to put the negative in front of any value that's negative. Variable you may be a little more familiar with. It's the letter. And we use variables to represent values that may vary. And then finally exponent you have an exponent of 2 on the x, you have an exponent of 2. Even this y has an exponent of 1, it's just inefficient to always write it, but in this case I'll go ahead and write it just to be explicit. This is x to the first power and this is y to the first power. Now that we've addressed some of the vocabulary, we can talk about like terms. A like term has the same variable and exponent. Same variable and exponent. So 7x squared and 3x squared are like terms. Even though they're not sitting next to each other, you can combine them. 
you simply add or subtract the coefficients based on their signs. So positive 7, positive 3 gives us a positive 10. It has to be the same variable and exponent. You're going to keep that variable and exponent. Looking for more like terms, we have y to the first and y to the first, so we can combine them. You look at the coefficient, negative 4, negative 5, combined to give you negative 9. And y to the first power just comes along for the ride. This is why you had to make sure that each term had y to the first power. This is what you keep. Now with this x to the first power, there's not another x to the first power in this expression. So I cannot combine this term positive 3x with any other. I simply bring it down and likewise with this positive 8. If there was another number without a variable in the expression I would combine it with positive 8. But since there is not another like term I simply bring it down. This is the simplified expression. Looking at this expression, I want to simplify it by combining like terms. As long as I have the same variable and exponent, I can combine the terms by adding or subtracting their coefficients. In this case, I have a positive 4 and a negative 1. I'm just not required to write that 1. So when I combine these two like terms, a positive 4 and a negative 1 give me a positive 3, and I keep y squared. With each of these, it's the same variable and exponent, so these are like terms. The coefficient of each is not written, but it's implied. So a positive 1, a positive 1 gives me plus 2. And the y, the variable and exponent, simply come along for the ride. This negative 6, there's no other number without a variable, so I simply bring it down. This is the simplified expression. I'm going to simplify three more expressions. And if you're at my website, you can download this worksheet. As you can see, there's a column with three more problems. After I simplify this one, the others in the column are similar. As we move across the page, they get a little more complicated. This one has parentheses. This has parentheses, and it's fairly long. To simplify this expression, if you're working in the same color, you might just use a different shape underneath like terms. So this is x to the first and x to the first. These are my like terms when I combine them. I simply look at the coefficients. A positive 3, a positive 7 combine to give me a positive 10. And it has to be the same variable and exponent. You're going to keep that variable and exponent. Now I have y to the first and y to the first. So I'll just put a little cup shape under each of these when I combine them. It's a positive 9, a negative 4 combined to give me a positive 5. And the y to the first simply comes along. This positive 2 doesn't have any other like terms. That is a number without a variable, so I just bring it down. This is the simplified form of this expression. Now to simplify this expression, we need the same variable and exponent. So each of these is b to the second. There are no other b to the second terms. If there were, we could combine them all. So I'll put a small box under the 7, negative 7b seven squared, and negative 8b squared. Negative 7 and negative 8 give us a negative 15. 
the b squared simply comes along. Now each of these terms has b to the first. If you look at each of their coefficients, a negative 5 and a positive 5 are going to combine to give us a 0. If you understand that these are simply going to cancel out, you can cross them out and be done with them. In this case, I'm going to show explicitly what happens. So I'll put a small cup under each of these. Negative 5 and positive 5 combine to give me 0. I'll say plus 0. I could say minus. It doesn't really matter because it's 0. And I bring the variable along. I'm not going to be able to leave this as my answer because 0 times b is 0. So I'm going to have to eliminate this from my answer. Now we have a positive 3 and a negative 4. These are like terms. When we combine them, we get a negative 1. But again, this is not the simplified form. We would have to write this is the simplified form. Now to simplify this expression, I have like terms x to the first and x to the first. But this is inside parentheses. I need to get rid of these parentheses before I can combine like terms. So this positive 4 is going to get distributed to each term. And that way I'll get rid of the parentheses. This gives us positive 8x. And positive 4 times negative 7 gives us a negative 28. I'll simply bring down everything that I have not touched. That's the 3x and this positive 2. Now I can combine like terms, 3x and 8x, combine to give us a positive 11x. Negative 28 and 2 combine to give us a negative 26. So this is the simplified form of our original expression. If you would like practice simplifying expressions by combining like terms, as long as you're at my website, I have this worksheet along with a detailed answer key.